I'm a huge fan of Samurai Jack. Step up to the mic for us. Chick, chick. One of my favorite animated shows of all time. Um, I was wondering, what was it like working with Miko or Mako? Mako. Yeah. I was going to add that on to my question of how to pronounce it. <laughs> um, working with Mako was actually an education uh, for me. I mean, here's a guy who had been doing it for a very long time. And I sort of, I knew who he was. I wouldn't say I was a fan, but, you know, like, you just knew, oh, yeah, the, oh, the guy from the Conan movie, yeah, I remember him. Um, but working with him, I realized a lot about voiceover and what it can be, because for me, it was always about, like, disappearing into a character. Like, when someone would come up to me and go, oh, my God, I didn't even know that was you, that, to me, was the ultimate compliment. And so, to me, Mako was kind of a one-trick pony. He's like, he's got this voice. You know? And then one episode, they cast Mako as Aku and as another character. And I was like, what, 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 does, does that character turn into Aku at the end? Because you know he's going to sound like Aku. I mean, Mako has only one voice, right? I mean, I'm just thinking this to myself. But as we did the episode, Mako did this character, and it was, a, it was a, some little weaselly guy. And he didn't change his voice, he changed his essence. So it was basically the same throat, the same actor, but the way he did it became something else. And when you watch the cartoon, you can't tell it's him. Even though he's not changing his voice, he just acted it so well and so differently that it became another character. I'm like, oh, that's actually harder than changing your voice. I'm so, okay. I've learned something. And it's pronounced Mako. Uh, I don't know about these people back here, but I know personally uh, I became aware of you because of Mad TV. And I was wondering if there's any, uh, any possibility of uh, sketch comedy in the future for you. Um, yes, there's always a possibility. I mean, it's, it's not a priority of mine uh, just because like, by the, by the time I left Mad TV, it was funny, because at the beginning of the fifth season, one of the writers came up to me and said, So, Phil, is, you know, I'm, I'm excited to be on the show. Is there anything that, you know, in the four years here you've been here, you haven't, you know, you wanted to do, but you haven't gotten to do, or something you've always been dying to do? And I'm like, no. <laughs> I've done uh, pretty much everything I wanted to do in sketch comedy, and, you know, it, although it's always great if I get a chance to work with somebody really good, then that fires you up again, but in general, um, I, we did a lot of sketches. And most of them were bad. I don't know, to me, sketch comedy is like baseball. If you hit it one out of three times, it's pretty much Hall of Fame numbers. You know, it's, it, you just can't do it that, you know, well that many times. It's like, well, it's only three minutes. Who cares if it sucks? Let me have a follow-up question to that over here, Phil. Yes, right. In your sketch comedy, like Mad TV or Saturday Night Live, these long-running shows where casts are constantly changing over the years. Right. For yourself and, and for your cast members, where do you weigh the, I've done this seven years, it's getting tired, but I'm employed? Well, what, what, what makes somebody finally just say, no, not an eighth year? Um, well, it's interesting. Yeah, it's the... It's the question. Um, am I Shelley Long or am I Kelsey Grammer? Who am I? Um, yeah, and any time in, a, in the entertainment you choose to walk away from a paycheck, you gotta be, there has to be an impetus. For me, it was, I was about to get married and start a family, and I figured this would be the last time I can quit a job. Um, <laughs> And also, it, it wasn't as much fun as it had been in the beginning. Uh, when, we, when we started out, there were eight of us chosen. We went through this whole process together, and it was hard work. You know, we were doing an hour of sketch comedy a week, and that takes a lot of energy and a lot of time. And we weren't getting good ratings, and Fox didn't like us, and nobody cared. 
which made it even harder. Um, but we were having fun. We were doing good stuff. Again, one out of three times. And we did these film parodies, that, some of which I thought were amazing. You know, some of which were amazing. Um, and then after the second season, things shifted and they cut some of the cast members and then they brought in new cast members. And instead of it being a team, it became like high school. Well, I'm a senior and you're a freshman. You go do the JV sketches, we're gonna do the fr fr varsity sketches over here. And like there became a hierarchy, which, you know, happens anytime you're doing something over time. But then the longer I was there, the more stratified it became. Like there were people who were first years, people who were second years, people who were third years. And it wasn't a team anymore. It wasn't, you weren't working together as a group. And so it became less rewarding. So that combined with the fact that I've never actually counted the number of sketches I did, but over five years, in the hundreds, I didn't really have any more sketch ideas. And it, it was time to go. On that show, primarily all performers are also writers? No, 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 no. No, it's not like SNL. Um, no, we're, 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 very, we're very fortunate on Mad TV because it wasn't a gladiator arena. Where, like on SNL, I've heard, if you don't write, you don't appear on camera. They would go out of their way to make sure everybody had a sketch to be in. Um, now, if you wrote them, they were usually sketches you liked and that were better, as opposed to ones where you just got stuck in, so you had some camera time. Um, so they, they would provide for you, but if you wrote, you got better material. Or at least material you liked better. Any other questions from the audience? Oh. What? How collaborative is when you do a, uh, a series like Justice League, for example, and you've done so many episodes, how collaborative is the process between you and the writers that they know to write for your interpretation of that character, or are you pretty much just given a script and told to stick to exactly what's on the page? Well, that's an interesting question, how collaborative is it? It's sort of, there's a, sort of a sideways collaboration um, in, in the best of scenarios. Like certainly there are some actors who try to put their stamp on it, but the problem is the actors come in way along in the process and a lot of times actors don't realize it. Like, it's your first day on the job, but we've been working on this script for two months. <laughs> Relax, it's written, okay? Um, and so they say, well, why don't I say it's like, because we tried that in three, three drafts ago and it doesn't work. But what happens is, as an actor, you work with what they've given you and you make it work. And the stuff that, they res that you do well, they respond to and they write more of it. You know, and you can, if you watch Justice League over the course of it, things change according to circumstance. Um, the, the chemistry between uh, my character, John Stewart, and Hawkgirl sort of began to pop. So they began to follow that more. It's like, wow, this matters. Let's write this. Because that stuff is more fun to write. The stuff that works. And one thing that was negative, uh, we, after the first season, we lost, uh, well, we didn't lose it. Michael Rosenbaum got hired to do Smallville. So he wasn't around as much. He would record his stuff, you know, solo or you know, over the phone or whatever. But in the beginning, you'll know, remember, Flash was really the comic relief. The show was really pretty heavy. There was a lot of menace, and he was a lightness. We, when Michael went away, we lost a lot of that. And I think mostly it was because he wasn't in the room to bounce. I mean, he's a very funny guy. And I think the writers were inspired to make his character funny by watching him and listening to what he did. And when he wasn't there, Flash became less funny. I mean, they could have written the same jokes, but it, they weren't inspired to. So that's why I say it's a sideways collaboration. Every, we get inspired by what they write, and what we do with it inspires them to write more. 